Road trip, road trip, road trip, road trip, road trip. But this week, we're gonna to try to tackle traveling across the state of Oklahoma to get to our destination of Amarillo, Texas. We're also really excited to drive Route 66. It's our first time ever driving any part of it. We're pretty sick of interstates at this point. We've been on I-40 for what it seems like the last two months. So we're gonna get off it for a little bit, albeit not very far. We're excited to switch it up and maybe try a historical route. After driving pretty much halfway through the state of Oklahoma, we just got on to Route 66, and our first stop is gonna be at Pops. I didn't realize it was a gas station until we pulled up, but we've heard of this place because they have a very large assortment of really unique sodas. We've been wanting to check it out and pick something out for ourselves. We're gonna pick out some sodas for each other to try, and I'm gonna try not to be too mean. That looks really sugary. They're really loud when you pull them out. <laughs> I mean, I'll take it, I love chocolate milk. That's supposed to be for me. Oh. <laughs> So according to the postcards that we just picked up, I think this thing actually has lights in it and it looks like they can make it light up at night. I kind of wish we were here to see that, but it's still really cool in the day. So we wanted to drink these sodas actually in Pop 66, but there was a really loud pressure washer outside. They were doing some cleaning. So we went down a little bit down the road and we are now at the official Historic 66 Round Barn. I don't know if this is the only Round Barn in America, but it is certainly the only one we have ever seen. It's really windy out here, so I hope you can hear us. We were gonna only buy like one each, but they had a six pack, so we bought three each for each other. For Jimmy, I picked out spaghetti flavored soda. I also got him mustard flavored soda because I really like mustard, but Jimmy doesn't. And finally, some Colorado Cola. I'm most excited about that one. These seem really disgusting. And for Natalie, I bought her grass soda because she's allergic to grass. That's mean. Billy's Bubbly Pop Grape Soda. Honestly, I think she's really gonna like this. It's a uh, pickle flavored soda. She loves pickles, so I think she's actually gonna really like this one. I'm excited about that one. All right, so up first is the pickled flavor soda. If this doesn't taste like pickle juice, I'm gonna be a little disappointed. I'm gonna try the Colorado Cola. Probably the best one you're gonna have. Yeah, we're saving all the nasty ones for later. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Do you not like it? It's sweet. Sweet pickle? It's like a regular pickle, but with a bunch of sugar. This one's pretty good. You get like root beer flavors, but like as soon as you drink it, it just tastes like a cola. You wanna switch? That's sweet. Oh gosh. Oh, that's nasty. I taste the pickle, but like, it's definitely just very sugary too. Let me, let me do one more. I think I would rather drink pickle juice from mm. the jar than that. Mm. You just keep going back for it. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's real bad. That's nasty. All right, we're gonna come back and try the rest of these later. I don't think our stomachs can handle it based off of that first pickle flavor. So we're gonna go check out the round barn. I can't believe we gotta do two more of those each. That's nuts. I'm gonna try to move on from that and just enjoy the barn. This is 
the outhouse and it says on here that in this town of Arcadia on every Halloween night all the outhouses would get relocated and they never figured out who was doing it. Oh my gosh, that's rude. <laughs> <laughs> So downstairs they have a really cute historical museum with a lot of old artifacts from the previous round barn. So I guess this must be just a replica of it. I don't know how this one's been staying out because there are no center structure supports. They're all connected through the beams on the sides like that run up the length of the actual round dome. It's really cool that they don't have it because it makes it really echoey. Okay, that was a lot of fun, but I think it's time for us to move on. All right, we're gonna get on Route 66. Arcadia Lake, deer management, archery harvest. Okay, Sounds like a lot of random country words, but yeah. Lake. So we're not making it very far on historic route 66 today. Literally right down the road there's Arcadia Lake which we couldn't pass up so we wanted to come check it out. skip rocks but I think we're closer to being able to surf than we are to skip rocks. The wind just blows it to the side before it even has a chance to hit the water. But he says he got it to go once. I didn't see it but I'll have to take his word for it. There are some ducks out here on the water and it is so windy today. They're really just getting taken for a ride by some of these waves. Most of the beach, if you could call it that, where we are is pretty much just all rock and stone. But behind me, I do see some trees and I can't believe we've been on the road for almost three months now and we have not pulled out our hammocks once. So we're back in the bus just grabbing our hammocks and we decided we're ready to brave some more nasty sodas. So I think the next ones we're going to try, Jimmy's going to try the spaghetti soda. And I'm gonna try Billy's Bubble Pop Grape. The spaghetti has more sugar in it than the grape one does. I'm scared for Jimmy. I'm gonna try my grape soda. I think Jimmy was being nice to me when he picked this one out. Cheers. That's pretty good. I might actually finish this one. I've got WT Heck Spaghetti Soda. This is gonna be real nasty. That does not taste like spaghetti. Oh, you wanna try it? Yeah, I do. Maybe it'll be good, I don't know.
That is indescribably disgusting. That is really gross. I want the grape one to kind of cleanse my palate though because I don't like the spaghetti. There you go. I'll take that. All right. Yeah, there's yours. I'll share with him. All right. Made it through some more. I'm dreading the last two though because mine is grass and Jimmy's is mustard. So that'll be fun. We're going to pace ourselves and we'll probably get to those later. <laughs> Good morning. We're in the luxurious Pilot Flying J. We try to stay at Love's because they've been treating us right. And they're based in Oklahoma. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was clean and everything. That's not the problem, but um, they actually didn't have any RV spots. So uh, we, we circled the whole thing and we couldn't find any. So right across the road was a Pilot, so we just came over here. But today we probably have less plans than we did yesterday. We're just gonna get on 66 and see where it takes us going west. <laughs> quite sure how but we kind of veered off of route 66 and we're heading north right now so we're gonna try to navigate and get back on it yeah I don't know we just kept following one road straight and apparently I was supposed to take a left and that was not my understanding of how route 66 worked I didn't know there was any turns in it so we're we found it we're gonna get back on it it's all part of the adventure there's a bridge coming up that I think we're just barely gonna fit under our clearance is like 12.6, and this bridge has a clearance of 12.10, so I hope we measured correctly. It's gonna be a tight fit. We go really slow. Oh my gosh. Not even close. <laughs> it, it was close. We had four inches to spare, but I was just holding my breath, waiting to hear our WeBoost antenna scraping on the roof, but we made it. I think this is Route 66. We found it again. All right, I gotta keep a better eye on it next time. This is the bumpiest road. I don't feel great about this, but I think we got to get off of Route 66, at least for now. That last 10 mile stretch was awful on the bus. I kind of expected it, but I didn't think it was going to be this bad. So I think there's an intersection up here. We're going to get off. We're going to go get some gas and we're going to kind of look at the map and see what we want to do next. We still want to have fun. You know, we, we want to hit up some sites, but we're probably going to have to get on I-40 at least for a little bit. I'm going to stay optimistic and we're going to try to get back on Route 66 later down the road. I think we can look on the bright side a bit because we did get to drive it for quite a while, like 40, 50 miles, right? Yeah, it was a long time, yeah. So we got to see a decent amount of stuff. It was a nice drive, it's just at the same time not the best drive because it's rattling the bus like crazy. But I'm glad we got to drive on it for a little bit. I'm grateful to the bus for putting up with the roads for a little bit. We're gonna try to be kind to our bus and maybe get back on the interstate where it's a little bit smoother ride. Do you hear that? It is, that's the wind. <laughs> it was rocking our bus when we were driving on uh, 66. It's like, it seems even worse now that we've stopped. It's crazy. The winds are like 40 miles an hour today. So this is pretty extreme for us at least. Maybe people here are used to it. For reference, I think that 70 mile per hour winds are officially classified as a hurricane. And right now it's 40 miles per hour. We're used to like five to 10, so this is really extreme. Jimmy went outside and he's filling up the bus with diesel and he's just letting me stay in here. So he's a real trooper. I just hope he doesn't blow away. like if it was just a little bit dustier this would be like the dust bowl like I feel like I'm getting to experience that a little bit here yeah your hair looks ridiculous uh, right now I even braided it 
I was gonna wear a hat, but I know I would have lost it in the wind if I had. I'm not a fan of this wind. I don't know if I've ever experienced it like this before, but I'm not really vibing with it. So Natalie and I talked it over. I think we're gonna drive a little bit on I-40. We're getting a little hungry, and we have not tried Oklahoma barbecue yet, even though we're almost three-fourths of the way down with the entire state. So that road right there is Route 66. So I feel like we're getting kind of the same effect, but traveling on I-40 lets us go faster. We have a smoother ride, and I feel like we can see most of the same sights. I know it's not quite the same, but I don't feel like we're missing out on that much. Well, this place looks nice. I'm really excited for this because I feel like they're gonna have some really good barbecue. Judging on the outside, I just feel like the more like homey and Southern the outside looks, the better the food it's gonna be on the inside. So I've got high hopes for it. We've driven through so many cow pastures. I feel like to have a smokehouse in Oklahoma, it's gotta be really good food. I can see why it comes with a knife and fork. <laughs> that is really good. I got the pork, but it's not pulled pork. I wasn't really sure what to expect, but this is actually really, really good. There's no way I'm gonna be able to eat this with the bun. It is <laughs> piled around it, and the bottom one is soaking in barbecue sauce. That's really good. Well, that place is really good. It definitely has some Southern qualities to it. It's decorated to the T on the inside. It's like Cracker Barrel on steroids. But uh, one really cool thing I saw on the walls was they had one section where people could submit photos of themselves in a Jig Smokehouse t-shirt across the world. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, I don't know how they started that trend, but I guess they just have some diehard fans all around the world. Their food there was really good. Jimmy got like a brisket sandwich, so it was beef barbecue, and I stuck to the classic and got pork barbecue. But it wasn't pulled pork, which is the only kind I've ever seen in the Carolinas, so that was new. It was really good though. It reminded me more of like beef jerky than pulled pork. So it was very different. I don't know if I could say which one's better because they're both really good. I burned this really bad today, but it's still good. tumbleweeds go across the road in front of us. I guess that's how we know we're in Texas. We're about to pass the Leaning Tower of Texas. We saw it on the map and we were really excited to see it in person, but it's like a water tower that's leaning. talked to the person at the front desk of the visitor center and they gave us some good recommendations. So we only have one day here in Palo Duro Canyon State Park. So we're definitely gonna go see the Lighthouse Rock Formation. That's the thing that pops up when you search for the state park on Google and we're really interested to go see that. But it's like a four hour hike. So we might start that after lunch and before it, there's a smaller hike at the visitor center right outside. That's about a mile and a half. I think we're gonna try to warm up with that. I think that one should take us down into the canyon is what she said, which sounds really fun. But the only problem is, is at the end, you need to walk all the way back up. So we'll uh, definitely get warmed up with that one. So we are at Palo Duro State Park and this is the second largest canyon in the U.S., second to the Grand Canyon. We found a tumbleweed. These are all over the roads. Natalie's too excited about these tumbleweeds. I just think tumbleweeds are so cool. I didn't know that they were a real thing. I thought they were only in cartoons until the first time I went to Texas about a year ago. Well, like, They're all over the place here. 
like jackalopes or something. Yeah. Are those, is that what they're called? Yeah, I think so. Like those uh, bunnies with the antlers. Yeah. I thought they were like the same kind of thing. Like it's not real. It's only in cartoons. But tumbleweeds are real. <laughs> Most people probably already know that, but it was news to me. This is ridiculous. It's so cool. You can see for so far. I feel like it's such a common sight for what you see on the internet and on people's videos. But this is the first time Natalie and I have ever experienced this and it's just breathtaking. I just can't believe this is what our life is like now. <laughs> Almost blew down the canyon. <laughs> uh. We can see our bus right there. I think we got lost on this warm-up trail. We see where we need to be, but when we walked up there, we don't see how the trail connects. So we had to walk all the way back down. We're gonna go back up, see if we can find it again and get back on track because this shouldn't be this hard. <laughs> I'm surprised they don't have a single marker here, but I think we found the trail we're trying to follow. We'll see, I'm sure we'll get lost again. Definitely feeling like a little weak in the knees looking down from here. Do I look cool? You scared me. <laughs> it's pretty high up. Hey, we gotta stop goofing around. We got stuff to see. That 500 foot climb back up to the trailhead was not much, but it we're already feeling sore. So it's probably good that we did this one as a warm up. So we're gonna eat some food, we got some deli sandwiches, and after that we're gonna hit the big lighthouse trailhead and we'll get to see the big rock lighthouse, which is what this state park's known for. I'm excited. but she said that big RVs do this all the time and that they're fine, so that we would be fine. <laughs> wow, that's where we came from up there. That drive was probably the craziest looking one that we've done so far, but at this point, Jimmy's basically a pro at driving the bus, so it really, I didn't have anything to be worried about. It just looks so insane because you're driving on a big hill. It's like a 10% grade and you're on the side of a cliff with these amazing canyon views. So it was, it was really pretty, just kind of a white knuckle ride for me. You heard it here first, folks. I'm a professional bus driver now. We can just barely see the lighthouse rock formation off in the distance and that's where we're hiking to. That's some good motivation right there. I'm just so like shocked right now. <laughs> I can't believe that stuff like this A exists and B that we're just right here next to it. It feels insane. <laughs> We're like halfway and we see it, there it is. But it still seems so far away. I'm not complaining, it is fun. We'll get there. We'll get there. Ooh, I don't know, man. 
Should we go the harder route or the easier route? I think you know the answer. The easier just sounds so nice, but like honestly, the first little view you get is between two rock, like a rock chasm right there. That looks so cool. I feel like we gotta go that way, don't we? We've got to. We're gonna go that way. Oh gosh. We're so close. <laughs> it's only 0.1 miles. How hard could it be? Uh, that's what you say now. <laughs> oh, all right, let's go. After you. A lot of upper body and you know what the fun part is, is i think that was the real trail right there <laughs> not what we just did we're taking the easy way down right <laughs> we made it i'm afraid like this is the part i'm gonna follow up that's a nice looking rock so here's a Natalie for scale. She's about five feet, five feet two. So that means the rock is probably 15 feet tall, I think. <laughs> I gotta get closer. All right, it's probably closer to 200 feet. bring up the swords next time we go on one of these huge sightseeing hikes because all we end up saying is yeah that looks really cool the landscape is so different from anything i've ever seen in person yeah, it's uh pretty cool when you say right? yeah yeah it's, it's good it's good <laughs> i guess we're gonna start heading back down it's always so weird to leave one of these places because uh, yeah, we don't know when we'll ever see this again but you know who knows next tuesday we'll be at something just as cool so that's kind of the fun part about this lifestyle. We gotta savor the moments, but then we gotta move on to the next one. Exactly. All right, start the hike down. Back down is always rougher, huh? It is, it's like a rock slide this way. Well, that was a lot tougher than we thought it was gonna be. So we're gonna head on to our next stop, which is just another Pilot Flying J. And that's where we're gonna call it. But before we do, again, we're really close to 10,000 subs. And as soon as we hit that mark, we're gonna have a live stream as a kind of a thank you to everyone. So make sure you like and subscribe and also leave a comment. You can leave a nice one, a bad one, doesn't really matter. So share it with your friends and we'll get to 10K together. If you leave a nice one, we will like you more though. But thank you guys so much for watching and for being here. We really appreciate it and love sharing our journey with you guys. Yeah, so until next time. Bye. I don't know if you can hear it. It's so windy out here, it's blowing on the bottles and making the, the music uh -huh. played over the glass bottles. It, sound, it sounded like... Okay, that one's, that one's too bad, this one. Oh, you hear that? Oh, yeah. I just heard it. It sounds like that. I get like notes of it every now and then. Yeah. That's really cool. Sorry, I thought that was me. No, yeah. Oh, you can hear it. There it is. Oh, I definitely hear it. Yeah. That's so weird. <laughs> that actually pulled me a little bit. <laughs> Are you trying to break our hammock? <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. You getting this camera guy?